So yeah, that happened. And to be honest, I still can't quite believe that it did happen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a few days ago, I did my first ever one-man magic show to an actual audience in an actual theater. It is still setting in, like it does not feel real. It was a completely surreal and amazing experience. Genuinely, the highlight of my magic career so far. And in this video, I just wanna talk about it. I just wanna sit down, talk about the process of making the show, putting on the show, what was going through my head, the highs and lows, and most importantly, will I do it again? And where can you see it? So, where to begin? Honestly, I just want to start this video by saying thank you to everyone who bought tickets and packed out the King's Arms Theatre that night. I can't believe it. And genuinely, I know it sounds obvious, but it would not have been possible without you. So if you came to the show, I know people traveled from far and wide to come and see it. You have no idea how much that means to me that you were there that night. That is so amazing. Thank you. All right, now that's out of the way. I want to start by explaining what it was like making the show just very, very briefly. I mean, I could talk for a long time on this because obviously it was a long process and a lot of things went in and out of the show during the creative process. This is something I might talk about in more detail on The Magician Club, but in short, I have been dreaming of doing this show for years. There are ideas and methods and tricks and things that I wrote in notebooks years ago that made it into The Honest Psychic. Things that I wrote down and thought, well, it's a cool idea, but nothing will ever happen to that and tossed it to one side. Those ideas made it into The Honest Psychic. So my first piece of advice, if you want to make a show or, or it's something that you're dreaming of doing, keep your notebooks, write down your ideas, because <laughs> it would not have happened if I hadn't have kept those ideas. I keep every little note and every little thing that I write down, and I'm so glad I did, because when I was putting this together, I just got out all of my notebooks, went through them all, all over again, rediscovered ideas that I'd completely forgotten I came up with. When I first started to piece together the show, it was gonna be something completely different. Instead of The Honest Psychic, it was gonna be the murder mystery magic show. Like, the, the whole concept was gonna be murder mystery themed, and that was gonna be the idea of the whole evening. And while it's a cool idea and something I might explore in the future, who knows, but it never really felt right. At that time, for my first show, it was never something I was completely passionate about. And again, another piece of advice, if you wanna write a show, pick something you love, Pick something you are not gonna get bored of because believe me, you are going to have to practice it over and over again and if you don't fully love the concept, it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna be a nice time for you. You need to pick something that you, yeah, are passionate about. Over the course of about a couple of months, I started writing the script, buying the props, piecing it all together and rehearsing it. But even during that process, things changed. Some things were swapped in, swapped out, <laughs> I don't know how professional this makes me sound, but seven days before the show, literally a week before the show, the method to one of the tricks changed slightly. Not, not loads, but I changed a part of the method in order for it to work better, just because I wasn't feeling it 100%, and this was only a week before the show, so I knew I had to change it into something that I could reliably do on stage. Uh, as it was, it was it was okay, but it needed to be 100%. That was an excruciatingly last minute change and not something I wanted to do, but something that I had to do. But before I knew it, the day of the show was here. So I rocked up to the theater, sorted out all the tech. There were a few tech elements I needed to run through. Again, massive shout out to Sam, the tech guy. Couldn't go this video without mentioning him. Thank you to Sam. Um, and I got a green room as well. That was very exciting. Never had a green room before. Whenever I do magic gigs, usually I just get given like a little side closet or a bathroom or a garage or something, but this was an actual green room, which was <laughs> so cool. I must say though, as nice as the green room was, I was essentially locked in that room for the half hour before the show on my own. So I just ended up like pacing around this green room for half an hour with my headphones in, trying to like block out what was about to happen. And I could like vaguely hear the audience arriving through the walls. It was <laughs> so <laughs> stressful. I was just I was just pacing around like a prison yard. Um, that was that was pretty bad. But then, as soon as the show started, the lights went down, the music came up. Something just changed. I just like locked in. I just like completely locked into this performance zone, which was so, so cool. The first five minutes of the show, I genuinely can't remember. Like I was just in a sort of 
adrenaline-fueled states of like autopilot doing the show. I cannot, I physically cannot remember doing the first five minutes of the show, which is so weird. I was just completely in a different state of mind. Like I say, I am used to doing close-up gigs. That is what I do most of the time. It's what I was doing the night before the show. I was at a close-up gig. So I'm not used to stage, but by far, by a long way, I love stage so much more. Stage performance is absolutely where I feel most comfortable. It's where I feel I can be my most truest performance self. So yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't want you to feel like I didn't enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I did. It just took me like a little bit of getting used to when I first stepped out and the lights hit me and there's all these people. It's like, okay, we just gotta, we just gotta do this. <laughs> I love that feeling. You can't get that anywhere else. As for the rest of the show, it went so well. Like I'm genuinely so happy with it. There were parts of it that went way better than I ever could have dared to imagine. Just parts of it that worked beautifully. There was only one thing that didn't really work. I, I dropped something at one point I shouldn't have dropped, but I, I, these things happen. And I think it makes it more natural as well. And if I were to do the show again, if possibly when I do the show again, those kind of mistakes will have just been ironed out. So I, you know what, <laughs> uh, for my first ever show, I am so happy with it. The audience afterwards, um, yeah, I mean, you can hear their reaction. Um, I think they loved it, <laughs> so I'm happy. Now, was this show a collection of my most fooling material? No, absolutely not, because if I performed all of my most fooling tricks back to back, it wouldn't be a very entertaining show. Yes, it would fool you, but it wouldn't feel like a cohesive show. Ultimately, what I aimed for was entertainment way, way above fooling factor. Obviously, it all fooled laymen, but I'm not designing the show for magicians. So if there were magicians in the audience who thought, hmm, I knew how that was done, then yeah, great, you should do, you're a magician. <laughs> like, that is not the point of the show, to fool anyone. I do, however, think that the first trick will have fooled all the magicians in there, and that's not me, me being big-headed, it's just, I genuinely think the first trick will have fooled all the magicians. Now, here is the bit of the video I am nervous for, but it's the part of the video I need your help for, because I am considering doing the show again, the same show with a few minor tweaks, in London this time. Obviously for the first one I wanted to do it in my hometown of Manchester and I know that not everyone can get to Manchester. In fact a very very small percentage of my audience even live in the UK let alone Manchester. But if I'm gonna do another show London seems like the next obvious choice and I need to basically get an idea of who could go. So if, if you feel like you would want to spend 12 to 15 pounds on a ticket to come and see The Honest Psychic in London, if that is something you could theoretically do. Be honest, <laughs> no pun intended, be honest, but I need to get an idea of numbers, I need to get an idea of the size of the venue and all that sort of stuff, because again, I'm doing this on my own, I've got no manager, no team, nothing like that, it's just me booking the venues and seeing who turns up. So, hit the link in the description, let me know. Last thing I want to mention is yes, the show did get filmed, and I know I'm gonna get a load of questions about where you can watch that film, but for now, I'm just focusing on the possibility of doing the show live again before I release it. But if I ever do release it anywhere, you will be the first to know, do not worry. So hang fire with those questions just yet because I'm figuring some stuff out. Once that's done, I'll let you know. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.